close to 30, he wants to have, he wants to settle down. That's Men can up. have kids all the way, you know. I know, and he's making in on the game and get it done if, if you can. When Margaret moved in with a friend, she didn't know their third roommate, Ryan, was going to put the moves on her. Now, madly in love and living together, Ryan is ready to tie the knot. I really would like to start a family and settle down and get away from running around and doing everything that I'm doing now. But Margaret isn't so sure. You have the money now, but you have to pay rent. So you're going to buy a $30 shirt, but you're going to pay the rent this week. Judge Lynn tell this couple to proceed with marriage or just move on. Today, on the voice court pick for your vows. Come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Kohler presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Margaret Luciano and Ryan Poyer. You two have been dating for a little more than a year, and you're trying to decide whether or not you should get married. So you came here to get my advice. You also gave me your marriage license. If I think you should get married, I'll give it back. If not, I will tear it up. Uh, uh, we're going to start with uh, Ms. Luciano. Why don't you tell me why you want to marry him, but why you're not so sure? I really do care about him. Honestly, Judge, I do care about him. And we do, when it's good, it is really good. But when we argue, it's always, we, he doesn't want to communicate. So it continues to be the same problems repetitively over and over and over again all the time. Well, give me an example of, of, of an when argument that continues to happen. Like you're in a washing machine. He feels <laughs> like when he wants to do something and I ask him not to, it's not that I don't want him to do it. He feels like I just want to do it my way. Whatever is my way, mm -hmm. if I don't want him to do it, don't do it. But I'm thinking about the better of the good. Like, well, we went to a hotel a couple months back, and right. he went. He wanted to smoke in the room, and you're not supposed to smoke in the room. And my name was on, on, the, on the room, and I didn't want to get charged with the $250 yeah. fee. So I asked him, please don't smoke in the room. And he got an attitude, left the room, was arguing, get, had an attitude, leave me alone, I don't care, I don't care, for like two hours, because I didn't want to let him smoke a cigarette in the room. Mr. Poirier, did you yes, pout for two hours because she wouldn't let you smoke in the room? I wouldn't say it was about two hours, but yeah, I did get an attitude. I did, I did. But do, do you see the logic in her not wanting to pay that $250 cleaning fee? I mean, I definitely do, I definitely do. But I think what the issue is, is because I feel like when she doesn't want me to do something or she doesn't want to do it herself, I'm not allowed to do it. And the reason I say that is, for example, since we're talking about cigarettes, for example, let's say I want to smoke a cigarette and she doesn't want to smoke. You understand what I'm saying? She'll say to me, well, I don't want it right now. I don't want to light one right now, so let's just not smoke. And I'm like, that's not fair. Like, I want to smoke, so because you don't want to, I can't. And I think that's an issue. We get into a lot. Okay. Like, well, first of all, both of you need to quit. <laughs> I mean, you know, we all saw that problem that's right true, there. That's true. I, You're I young, 21, 26. It's not like you didn't have the info. Um, tell me, Mr. Poyer, what you think the major problem in the relationship is. Um, I think majorly, like, our problems are, first of all, lack of communication because, I mean, on my end, like, I get an attitude, I get upset, and I just shut down and stop speaking to her all together. But that's basically because I want her to understand or I want her to feel where I'm coming from. And I feel like maybe if I just stop and I shut down and I give you the silent treatment, it would put you in a mood where you're in the same kind of mood I'm in, I'm in and you can understand where I'm coming from. So that's one of the reasons where I do that. in heaven's name <laughs> did you come up with that pretzel logic? How are you I supposed to be able better to get your point across and be better understood by choosing to say nothing at all? Sure. How does that make any sense? Exactly. Yeah, He's like a big right. kid. When he, it's not his way, he gets an attitude. He wants to be left alone. He'll walk away from me. He tells me he doesn't care. And it's, it's very childish. I just want to communicate. I would rather us sit down after having an argument. Of course, take your five to 15 minutes to relax, cool yourself down. But I would rather us sit down and communicate so this doesn't keep happening. Because right. it's always the same thing. Thank always. You. And that it's, it's the minor things. Now, you're 21. Yes. And you're 26. Yes, ma'am. And you say that he really wants to ha start having a family. And uh, yes, he does. I and understand. that's part of the reason he wants to get married now. It's because he'd like to start a family. Yes, and I understand because he is getting older, and I understand he wants to settle down and be, st and be have a, a, a family and oh, a life. Oh, oh, let me explain this to you. <laughs> 26 is not older. That's what he feels. He feels you know, like he's I close to 30. He wants to, have, he wants to settle down. That's Men what he can have me. kids all the way, <laughs> you know. I know, and he's <laughs> make it in on a cane and get it done if, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just, it's
it's just, it, there's no rush. Right. Really, there's no rush. But go and, ahead. And he, he, we live with my mother, and we have a job that isn't a job to even think about anything like that. We work, in, we get 7.25 an hour, and we're lucky if we get 20 to 22 hours a week. We'll get uh, maybe a little over $100 a week. How are we supposed to support a, another human being with that amount of money? Ooh. We can barely support ourselves. Look at all that rational going on yeah. over there. That's just wonderful. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> now, Mr. Coyer, what's wrong with that logic? It's not even that it's something wrong with that logic. Like, I'm not saying I expect her to just, you know, wake up tomorrow morning and go, let's go for it, let's have a kid. You understand what I'm saying? But in short-term goals, like, I really would like to start a family and settle down and get away from running around and doing everything that I'm doing now. Like, I, I personally feel within the next five years, I want to be established. I want to be able to have my family being started. I want to be married. I want to have my own nice little apartment. But Honor, he, he tries to slip in. He'll tell me he's not going to put a condom on. That's not trying later. That's trying right now. Because if something happens and I get pregnant, the baby's not so going to come in five years. Oops, it's going to come now. You're looking for oops. If it happens, it happens. You cool with it. If it happens, it's not going to take away from how I feel about her. It's not going to take away from how I'm going to feel about that Let child. Let me know? tell you what it will take away. It'll take away your ability to get an education. It'll take away your ability to get a better job. It'll take away your ability to save money. It'll take away your ability to go out for, for 20 years without having... You know what I mean? It right. takes a whole lot away. And I love my kids, and you know, but I had my first at 32. And then I not altogether sure I was ready. It's a whole lot going on. You've got to you got to be more than stable. You got to be solid and laid out and hard right. and you know. When the voice court before your vows continues, is Ryan's temper out of control. If we get into an argument and we're arguing, I know my temper and I know because I can't get you to feel the way I feel. I might start to call you names or anything. I want you to be as upset as I am. Considering getting married but aren't quite sure your intended is the right one for you? I'll give you my opinion. Call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court Before Your Vows is back with the case of Margaret Luciano who is having second thoughts about marrying her boyfriend, Ryan, because she says he is childish. But is his attitude the real problem in this relationship? A bad attitude, a short temper, a short attention span, and you are verbally abusive. I mean, that, I, mean, that, I mean, that spells jerk to me. I'm the type of person I like to conserve, I like to save. I'd rather get my paycheck and know that on the day before I get my paycheck, I'll still have something to have just in case I need anything. He's the type of person, he gets money, he'll he waste goes, it. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he doesn't think mm -hmm. about later. If he doesn't have money in three days, it's okay to him because he'll just figure out how to do it. I don't live like that. I like to make sure that I have always. And that's where our one of our problems Mr. comes. Mr. Poirier, you s and, I, and I see what you're saying about, you know, that, that he doesn't think ahead. He thinks for the right now, for yeah. the moment. Mr. Poirier, you say, though, when she talks to you about things, it's always an argument as right. opposed to an explanation. Right. Why don't you tell me how she goes about explaining her position and why it's a problem? All right. For example, let's, let's start with what she was just saying about the money. For example, let's say between the two of us, I have $100 and she'll have her own $100. And I walk into a store and I see a T-shirt that I want. That maybe it cost $30. You know what I'm saying? And in my brain, the rationalization in my brain is, okay, this T-shirt, I like it, I want to buy it, it costs $30, I have $100, I have money left over, I'll be fine. Her rationalization is, no, you shouldn't do that, don't do that, because later on, it's going to be, you don't have any money, and da 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 but in my brain, it's, but this is what's going to make me happy at the moment, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I want for myself at the moment, so I can say, well, I bought this for myself, I treated myself, this is how I feel, but in her brain, it's, no, I don't want you to do that, don't do that, please mm -hmm. don't do this, please mm -hmm. don't do that, and it's not so much of what she says, it's how she, how says, she it. says it. It's how she says it, because it's not, well, babe, can you please not, and Do you show his it. position and wants any respect? 
I think what he's trying to say is, hey, this is how I feel about it, and you tell him how he's feeling about it is wrong. Even though no. you disagree I with it, like you make him feel <laughs> just wrong. No, because even when we do when we when we do have arguments, sometimes I can have an attitude in my voice, be a little snappy, and he feels some type of way when I say things in a certain t way. But I'll always correct myself. It's not that I don't want you to be happy. It's the fact that all right, you have the money now, but you have to pay rent. So you're gonna buy a thirty dollars shirt, but you're gonna pay your rent this week. So I mean, he needs to prioritize. Right. The shirt Always. is still gonna be in the store next week. I, I see the nature of the problem here, and I, and I think I know what's wrong. You're extraordinarily mature for twenty-one. You yeah. really are. Thank you, you, man. Uh, you think. Uh, you, you, you have thought processes that are better than a couple of 40-year-olds I know. <laughs> um, I took a look at your uh, compatibility test, and I got to say, Mr. Poyer, I thought I was going to come out here and not like you. Right. <laughs> I, I was ready not to like you because when I asked you to write what five things were wrong with you, because I always do that because right. I think that's important that you're self-aware, mm -hmm. you said you had a bad attitude, a short temper, a short attention span, and you are verbally abusive. I mean, that, I, mean that, I mean, that spells jerk to me, <laughs> it does, but you're it not does, a jerk. It does, it does, but see, what it is is Are like, these things really wrong with you? Because I don't see it. I believe so. Like, I'm not going to stand here and say it's all her fault because sometimes I just have an issue. Like, I wake up and I'm in a bad mood and I understand, like, sometimes I'll take it out on her and it doesn't entirely be her fault. Right. And it's not because I want to wake up and I just want to start an argument or anything like that, but at the same time, as far as us arguing and us going back and forth, it's like... Listen, I have a I have a really short temper span. Like just like that, I can get upset about anything, and it doesn't even have to be something major. It just happens. Aww. And my whole thing is, how can I say it? Basically, like if we get into an argument and we're arguing, I know my temper, and I know because I can't get you to feel the way I feel. I might start to call you names or anything, because I want you to be as upset as I am. I don't want to be the only person that's upset while you're sitting in my face smiling. Like, you're smiling, you're laughing, you're joyful. So if but I'm jacked up, she needs to be jacked up, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When divorce court for vows continues, can these litigants convince Judge Wynn that their marriage is meant to be? What I'm going to ask you is to give me a 90-second commercial about why it is the two of you are made for each other, should be together happily ever after. <laughs> Go. Do you think it's okay to get married in your early 20s? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. the case of Ryan Poyer, who admits his temper gets in the way of his relationship with Margaret. But are their families the reason this couple is having second thoughts? What does your family in general think about the two of you getting married? Now, we've been talking a lot about why and how and why you don't get along, but you still are considering getting married. And I'd like to have some balance, but what, what I'm going to ask you is to give me a 90-second commercial. <laughs> about why it is the two of you are made for each other, should be together happily ever after. <laughs> Go. All right. Well, I mean, in the beginning when we first got together, I didn't really know too much about her as far as what kind of person she was and how this was going to turn out. And myself just getting out of a relationship like maybe two or three months before that. But then I came to the conclusion that she's actually a thoughtful person. You understand what I'm saying? Like we argue and stuff like that. But at the same time, she still shows me on the flip side that she cares about where I'm coming from or she cares about what happens to me because she gets upset when she starts to think about, well, maybe you can get in trouble for this or maybe this might happen or maybe this might happen. So she's so concerned as far as my everyday life and she also showed that she can be there on a long-term basis she shows me that she's not just there for the moment or it's like I'm not just a space filler somebody that she wants to be with now and then not you're later just on a space filler. You know, like she like shows that. me that, that she 90 wants seconds me to be there. was over a little while ago <laughs> <laughs> I heard what you said and I get it I'm gonna ask you to do the same thing all right 90 seconds go 
we're together all the time. And you know, if you're really not meant to be together, you can't stand to be each other. We work together, we live together, we wake up to each other, we're always together. I feel like, yeah, we might have our minor problems, but if most people who are together all the time fight about huge things, we might fight about minor things that could really be resolved if we both sat down and actually communicated and fixed it. And if maybe, if I do do something, he let me know so we could not continue to go through this. What does your family in general think about the two of you getting married? The people in my family, they, they do like him and they just feel like if he could step up and be more stable with mm. everything because he doesn't always pay rent on time. And if we move out, you can't do that in an apartment. Right. You can't not pay rent on time. What, and if we do have a child, we can't be homeless with the child. Mm -hmm. We can't ha not have food or diapers for the child. So if he could step up to the plate and be consistently stable, then yes, uh, we have no problem with him. What does your family think? They actually like her, to be honest. I mean, you it's sound surprised. <laughs> <laughs> because my family doesn't really like anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like my family just automatically comes off aggressive, and they try to pull out of you what it is that you're about or what it is that you want. But they actually genuinely like her. When divorce court before your vows continues, can Judge Lynn help Ryan figure it all out? You know what happened to you? What happened to me? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened to you. Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Margaret Luciano and Ryan Poyer, who have come before Judge Lynn to ask whether or not they should walk down the aisle. Do you come from a, a, a family of very uh, outspoken it's on and pop it every day kind definitely, of family. Definitely. Everybody's loud and definitely. this and that the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what happened to you? What happened to me? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened to you. You know, when you're young, actually all throughout all your life, but right. especially when you're young and your brain is forming and you get the neurons and the synapses and all of that going on, th there's this thing called neuroplasticity. And it, it, it your brain gets trained how to behave based upon, in part, the environment that you're in. Right. You come from hoop and holler, so you believe that when anything goes wrong, you're supposed to hoop and holler. You've been trained to feel, feel and do, not feel, think, then right. do. She feels, thinks, then does. This is appropriate. This is not. <laughs> this is appropriate. This is not. I understand how you feel. But basically, how you feel is not how you're supposed to behave. Right. It's an indicator, but it is not a dictator. So if you feel angry, what you need to do is say, hey, I'm angry. What am I angry about? Because half of the time, you're not mad at the person you're about to yell at. Right. You know? So what am I angry about? You got to name it and claim it. And then you got to say, is Holland going to help it? Right. Nine times out of ten, it's sure a no. It and then you got to be man enough to say, I understand my anger, I can feel it, but I cannot act upon it. Right. Because you're not going to be any kind of husband if you can't do that. And you most certainly can't be a father. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. You have to be all the way completely grown to be married. Completely grown. And then you've got to be super completely grown to have a kid. Right. And I think you, you're emotionally based and not intellectually so. And until you can put the emotions down and go with the, the, the intellectual part of it, you're not ready. You're just not ready. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're not a good guy. Right. I think you are a good right. guy. You're just not a mature guy. You need to grow up. Right. And I think part of growing up is listening to your woman over here because over here, Ruth D. Rational got it together. <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. She understands what it is to wait. She knows what it is. And just pay attention. You pick the good one. There's no point in picking a good one unless you listen to her. That's just the whole point right there. So I'm not going to give you your, your marriage license because you guys are ready yet. But stay together. Work on it together. You be committed to your contraception. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't play around with it. Don't just this one time, okay? Don't do it. No. 
Got it? Because it's not worth it any longer. Stay together, get smarter, uh, but don't get married yet. This matter is adjourned. All right. Parties ready to call. Ryan states that there.